Okay, second cut. But what else? Actually, I was able to do the thing I did last time where I ordered the books by free reads and non free reads. So, from Hellblazer to Guardi uh, to Ultimate Galactus Trilogy, they're all rereads, and you'll know it's newbie boobies when I get to the movie. And yes, I did say that. <laughs> Alright, first up is Hellblazer. This is the Garth Ennis run, although halfway through it is. I think it's Jamie Delano's run. Yep, first, first however many issues. And, uh, nice surprise from the last book that I didn't get the Grant, Grant Morrison issue. I think I had mentioned that last cut, though, in that last cut, when I went over the books. I think I looked through it, because I thought, it, I, I saw it was a different print thing. I was like, I wonder, and I was like, yeah. Preacher by Garth Ennis. Two Garth Ennis books. And Pentapolitan. So yeah, all these are rereads. Preacher, I mean, Preacher, like, I'm surprised it took me so long to reread that series. Although, it's a series that I, like, I remember the most from, you know. Uh, Trent Metropolitan has proven to be not that much so. Especially in your earlier volumes. It's one of those books that, it's like, yeah, this is why I reread books. Uh, they finally had all new X-Men. They didn't have it last time. It's like, no, we don't have it. And they put it in again, like, oh, we do have it. Oh, you know, what do you know? Yeah, it's one down, volume five. And it was funny, because, you know, like I said, it was a reread, so I knew it was, uh, um, that. So, Poe Dameron and Darth Vader, you'll be seeing... Oh, no, no, Poe Dameron isn't a reread. Sorry. Just Darth Vader. Just Darth Vader. Darth Vader's only reread. Poe Dameron is the next volume in the series. Probably should have started from the beginning from Poe... Po, 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 Jesus. For Poe Dameron. But, yeah. Uh, cause it's been so long since I read that series. It's a long break, cause I didn't like volume two. I said, I, 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 there's, there's another Star Wars book that's gonna be coming up that I, um, got from Answer Alone. I decided, you know what, let's get back on Poe Dameron and finish that up. Cable and Deadpool volume two. Green Arrow, the nice cover. The cover I like the most now, cause it was just jock cover, and I know it's jock cover. For G Green Arrow year one. And you saw, um, Cable and Deadpool before there. I'm not, I'm not trying to speed round these. These are ones that I've al already read before and you've already seen before. Not like like not like two weeks ago, not that quickly, but it was like about like a year ago probably, maybe a little bit more than a year ago. Uh, so Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Five, Black Vortex didn't get it. Forgot about forgot all about that crossover. Or I thought, or I thought it was just because it's Volume Seven. I keep forgetting that like. You know, Guardians came out before X-Men did, so obviously it's going to be one of those series that, you know, when they have a crossover, it's going to be Volume 5 and Guardians and Volume 7 and X-Men, because Guardians came out first. No, wait. Sorry, X-Men came out first, then Guardians. Sorry, X-Men's older than Guardians. You're probably, always, you're probably screaming out at the TV screen, not the TV screen, but you're probably screaming out at the screen like, No, that's what it means. <laughs> or like, you're just confused. Yeah, X-Men came out before uh, Guardians, so it's always later in the X-Men books than the Guardians books. And I always obey X-Men books. I don't know why. But I was still going to my Guardians before. I don't know why I'm so confused. But anyways, I'll be, a little bit, I'll be a little bit confused reading that Guardians book because I don't remember a whole lot from Black Vortex. Although I think I remember enough. I don't know. I don't, I don't, remember, I don't remember Black Vortex being all that good anyways, so probably we'll just skip it. Just say the hell with things, but by the time I get by, t by the time I get to that point with X Men, it'll be yesterday's news. Uh, Sandman Volume Two, we finally had that, but I had to get I had to get it at the on Intro Loans one, Gmail, it's not my local library, where I bet you guys it's still checked out. So it's probably it's a Netflix series, I bet you. But you would think that would be checked out when the Netflix series was out or coming out, you know, not way after, to where even I'm behind. You know, to where I'm behind. Uh, to where, you know. Uh, Batgirl Volume 2. I don't know I had to be so specific about the... Where I'm behind. I was trying to say, like... I don't know what I was trying to say. Like, even, like, even I'm... I was trying to say, like... Um, like, where I'm so far behind. That I feel like I'm wicked far behind. You know, like, it's yesterday's news kind of, kind of thing. Uh, Ultimate Galactus Trilogy. That's the last one to reread's. So now let's go on to the movie, and then the last and then a few Star Wars ones. Multiverse of Madness. I decided to do it. It's kind of funny. Like, when it first came out in theaters, I wanted to see it so bad, and now I'm like, eh. I had, I had my local library, so I was like, I can't get it for free, why not get it? The one thing I hate about the DVDs, though, for Disney, is they're like, we're not giving you any special features. You gotta buy the Blu-ray for that. I'll bet you any mini, any, any, any mini, any mini, like five years from now, 
they're gonna make it 4K only, 4K exclusive, and then Blu-ray will have no special features. Well, how long until like 4K becomes more um, bell centric? Why, why, why do they have that much? Why do they have that word in my mind? I don't know. But that's probably like in five years, is 4K gonna be like the, ne the next Blu-ray, or is it gonna be kind of like that niche thing that only uh, theater nerds have? Now I'm trying to find the other Star Wars one. I think we're done with the Star Wars one, so why am I doing that? Why is doing that? Uh, Poe Dameron and Han Solo, those are the other ones. And that's the whole reason why I got it was because of Han Solo. And the only one that came in today. It was so, so annoying when that happened. It's like, hey, uh, there's one book left. It didn't come in yesterday. The other one came in. I mean, either way, I knew I had to wait till t at least today. So, I was like, whatever. Because the other one came in. I'll show you. Well, not right now, but pretty soon here. Uh, like with X-Men... Moms, they said, "Hey, uh, well, they're gonna have it. I mean, we 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 don't have we don't have it. Um, we don't have it." And then I was like, "I thought you did." And it was like, "Oh yeah, well, when transit, I swear to God, it went to transit to not available. I swear to God, that's what happened. I put it in again, and I'm like, oh, we have it. Yeah, in transit, you got it.' I don't understand my library sometimes. It's not their fault, and I think it's just the computer's fault. The computer's like, uh, we don't know what that is. What's that word? I don't know if it's because it's, well, it's not the... Because there's an English translation, but they don't cite the English translator as that. Let's see. I don't think it did, at least. Yeah, Janet Hong is the English, um, translator. And Yang Shin Ma is when they have credited. So maybe because it was a different kind of writer, like it's kind of an, an like it's hard to spell. So maybe it, like I don't know. It's weird though. But an X Men, when they have no no uh, excuses for that. Uh, Ant Man Volume Two. Now there's two Volume Ones for Ant Man. I knew this going in. Well, actually, I knew this before I put it in, but I almost put in Volume One. I almost put it in my into the. Um, iPad, because they have the Friday the first. There's, so there's Second Chance Man is the actual Volume 1, and then Volume 2 is, uh, which should have, should have just called Volume 2, is, I think it's called Everyone Loves Team Up, so this is the next venture run. Um, that's what I'm reading currently. I have to read the, the last two issues. So far, so so far, so good. I actually like it a lot better than the actual Volume 1, than the, than the um, 2015 series, I think it was. It was the Second Chance Man, which I took a long break from. Because of that. Uh, okay, I already showed Hellblazer, so why am I doing this? Hike. Let's have it upside down, so I know which uh, order we're going in. Um, Sonic the Hedgehog? Volume... What volume? Volume 3, I believe. It doesn't say it in the back. Uh, you, like with Volume 2, there's uh, a bit of a mess. You, you can tell that this is a kid's book. The kids aren't exactly... Aren't, don't, don't know exactly how to be... Uh, not considerate, but I don't know how to be, like, um, um, like, frag fragile with books. You know, they're like, oh, is this a book? You know? I don't go that easy on it. You do. Uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, Volume 3. On the same boat as I am with Sonic. Good thing there's no crossovers. I gotta read, like, like, I did deal with Guardians of the Galaxy and X-Men. I guess Boom Studios and IEW they would never have a crossover anyways. Uh, I don't think at least. So how 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 well along do you how well how well along? How 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 well along? I don't know. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. How how, how do, I get, do I get along to enough to do I get along enough to make a crossover? Um, next one up is Blackbird. This is one I almost bought myself. And this is also part of it was part of the uh, Image Comics fantasy uh, guide that I looked that's where I got um, Birthright, the Realm there's another one I'm forgetting about. Middle West was on there, but I, was the, I, I already knew I wanted Middle West beforehand, before I even looked it up. There's something I still haven't gotten. A Rat Queens was on there. Yeah, it was it was big into fantasy. Um, what was I saying? I think like Middle West was one. There was another one I probably had read that I really liked. I don't know. But Blackbird. Sam Humphreys. I know Sam Humphreys is a good writer. Because one of the books I read last week was by him I really liked. It was one of the Looney Tunes ones. All right. Deadpool Bl Bad Blood, another one I almost bought myself. Um, this was, because I came out with it, this, this, this is an OGN, 
but they recently, and I hope it's not an extended version of it, I don't think it is, but then, like, when I was talking about it, man, in the first cut, I was like, wait a minute, I vaguely remember hearing someone say, like, thinking Critical said something about it. I don't think he did. I think I was, I think it was, it was just hearing things, you know what I mean? Um, but yes, this is Deadpool Bad Blood. So, this is the OGM. They came out with, like, six issues of, like, in, a bit in floppy form, but I think it's the same, I think it's the same stuff all around. There you go. It was one that I just, it was one that I just happened to come upon. Like, it was when I was, when Night of the Living Deadpool wasn't coming in. I bet you it still isn't in. Um, because they had gone to shipped to, to, like, held to gone. It was a really weird glitch. I wonder if it was because they, they thought one of the libraries was part of Gmail, but they weren't. It's like, oh, you're not? Like, no, we're not. So we can't, we can't do it through Gmail. So like, okay. And the only library that had it, that was there, didn't have it. It was out of stock. Because it was, honestly, it was... Halloween time, so it makes sense. Okay, next one up is Bully Wars by Scotty Young. This is the only book, I don't know if you guys can, can, can kind of see it, but I think it's the only image comic I've seen that's rated E for everyone. Which, you would, it both confuses me and makes it a little bit more clear to me that the T for Teen, um, the Teen for Teen books in general are... T or teen. But there's one that is, um, it's Jason Aaron's Sea of Stars book, which I was thinking of getting, but I probably won't. I'll um, probably, probably get it from the local library, see if they have it. Um, but it's just, get it, the volume one, I mean. Um, but that, they say, is all ages, but it's rated T for teen. And they didn't say the same for Skull Kicker. Skull Kicker says T for teen, but if it's all ages, why not say E for everyone? You know, that's a whole bunch of confusion there with the image comics. And it doesn't, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter to me. It was, it just because the book is rated E for everyone, doesn't mean it, it's for kids. doesn't mean it's bad, but it's kind of like, you know, they had to censor some stuff, you know. And Skull Kickers is a fantasy book. Fantasy, like, high-flying. I heard, I heard it's violent when, you know, it's it's a action book, so it is violent. But, you know, T for Teen. But then, of course, and this is Boom Studios, not Image Comics. Uh, Image Comics makes Skull Kickers, but Boom Studios has some, something that's coming to children. That's 13 and up, and they have F-words and violence galore. Like, R-rated junk in a PG-13 book. It's, it says PG-13. And, of course, like, T-14 Marvel, that means... P that means PG, and T-plus means PG-13. But T-plus from Image Comics, that means between PG-13 and R... Because they're between, because parental, it's, it's like, go one down for Marvel Comics. Parental Advisory, Teen Plus. Teen Plus, T. You know, PG-13. PG it's, very, it's very confusing, honestly. I wish Image Comics, and like, I wish there was like, not a comics code, I do not want a comics code. I wish there was like a, all around, like, okay, this is T Plus for like, teens up age rating, 16 plus. I mean, again, at the end of the day, it does not matter to me, but it's confusing. Because I, I am kind of, I do have that, I do still have that, like, edgy per person in me that's like, Hey, a mature read the book, ha <laughs> yeah, yeah, gonna see some stuff that we can't see in Marvel books, ha <laughs> And then, you know, when I see it's T+, I'm like, oh, man. Like, I'm still gonna get it, obviously I'm gonna purchase it, but it's just one of those things where I'm like, oh, okay. They've watered down a bit, not too much. There's some T+, uh, image books, I'm like, oh, that was T+, wow, okay. Uh, this one. Everyone hates this one. Everyone hates this one, but I want to see how bad it is. I remember reading the first issue way back when, didn't like it, but I want to finish this once and for all. And they, my, my local library has a sequel series that everyone says is much better, so... We shall see. Peter Panzerfaust, the Peter Pan World War II book that's written by the same guy who brought you Rat Queens. Let's go right into Rat Queens, because I had to get... Two volumes of it. Not because I was like, oh, there's only two volumes left, might as well do it. No, because book two of the hardcovers, you would think, oh, yeah, it has, uh, it, 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 you know, volume one is for ten issues. You know, volume two is going to be, you know, the, the following two, ten issues, right? No. Well, eleven, because it's David, there's a special in there. No, it's not. It's the next, it's the first ten issues of the next Rat Queens ongoing. So it's like, the Guardians of the Galaxy, the first hardcover, having the first 10 issues, and then you move on to 2015 series. So, 2013 series, then it moves on to 2015 series, and you miss all that story. It made no sense to me. And that was, the, again, the hardcovers. I didn't know until I got it. To be fair, I wasn't too confused. You know, if I hadn't, if I, I would have been none the wiser if I hadn't looked it up. 
if I hadn't, like, you know, I, I was suspicious. Like, I was like, wait, that says the first 11 issues, but this is, like, if I hadn't done that, then I wouldn't have, um, never would have even, never would have even noticed, but, you know, it was one of those things that I was like, why doesn't that follow up to where this came from? I don't know. It was weird. But yeah, I'll read this before this. So I'll have to put that to the side. Alright, so yeah, Rack Queens. Explain that. Princeless. Volume 3. And you'll see a review of the Volume 2. Let's just say there's more connections I can make to Moon Girl and Double Dinosaur besides the fact that they're for kids and that I'm just going to say tell with it and just read the entire series. And I'll get the read the whole entire series from my local library and then once and for all done with it never read it again secret avengers volume two and then as guardians of the galaxy volume two secret avengers i mean i didn't think they'd have i, and yeah, I thought i'd have to go to intro alone to get this one and it was kind of too late for me when i finally got into secret avengers because i took a lot of breaks which i shouldn't have but i was busy couldn't help it so that is all the books for the haul so now let's get on to the reviews starting with go to 25 30. Ooh. 20% though. Of course, I'll have it right up here. Alright. Elvis, the movie. I liked it enough. It was like, it was, um, honestly, the honest trailers kind of ruined the movie a bit for me. I was like, oh, so it is kind of one of those movies. But I, I, I think I'm a sucker for those movies, you know, biopics. But not, uh, unlike with Rocket Man and um, Bohemian Rhapsody and not Sing Street. Oh my god, I remember that? That was a good movie. I think, I honestly vaguely remember it. <laughs> I, I, I honestly said to myself, like, watch that name. Yeah, I did. I just don't remember seeing it and watching it. Um, I watched that again. Oh, it was the one, it was, it was a Bruce Springsteen one. It was like the guy, he was really, he was really into Bruce Springsteen. It wasn't, it wasn't a Bruce Springsteen biopic. It was like a, a one, one by the light. It was like this guy who liked Bruce Springsteen. It was Bruce Springsteen songs in it. It was like a backdrop of Bruce Springsteen songs, and it came out. You know, guy really liked it. That was all about like a love. It was a love letter to Bruce Springsteen. Uh, but all those movies, I, I was obsessed with the with the um, songwriters afterwards. I was like, oh wow, thank you so mad. These Appen people. I said I want out, and they're like, nope. We're gonna send you a bunch more emails now about hey, here's this new thing you can sign up for. Here's a new uh, new opportunity. I'm like, hey, I said I wanted out. You, they know what they're doing. I swear to God, they know what they're doing. But anyways, um, so like with Elvis, I was but unlike with those movies where I was like, oh yeah, I like these writers and uh, songwriters. And I like these singers now. I wanna listen to all their listen to all their albums. I mean, Queen, I already was a huge fan of Queen beforehand, but even even bigger fan. Um, I wasn't like with Elvis. There's like a couple songs I may listen to more often now, but. It's gonna be the same two I have listened to already, so. Um, but it was still a good movie. Um, wasn't too long as I thought it would be. Like, it was long. But it was kind of one of those movies where I was like, oh, we're already here? Cool. Uh, Bad Friend. This was just a depressing book. It had a kind of a happy ending, but my god. I feel bad for these people. I think it was a semi-autobiographical -auto book. I don't know. Like, I could be wrong. Constantine, so I had we had the John Constantine book I was reading, you know, the Jamie Delano series, and then we had, which I, which I liked, you know, it's still, it was a lot better than the last volume, but actually my favorite volume of, of uh, Delano's run so far, The Family Man, that was like, see, this is the Jamie, Jamie Delano that I want, this is not, not, not the one before that was getting too wordy, this is the perfect amount of wordy, um, but did not have the Grant Morrison and Neil Gaiman, and it was, it was another fight, but they had like, there was like one shots with these authors, but it was still like part of the ongoing. They skipped those issues in the, in the printing that I got. So from now on, I'm gonna have to try and get the ones that I remember seeing, you know, because apparently there's two printings, and the older printings didn't have every issue that I used to get rid of. I don't know. It makes sense because it's chronologically like the way it's supposed to go because they're kind of one shots, so it doesn't really matter in the long run. But it's still annoying because I remember really enjoying the Grant Morrison issue. Uh, but then we had the Kami Garcia book that I read all in one sitting, and it, I mean, it, it flowed, it was a, it was a fast-paced book, but it wasn't Constantine, I can tell you that. Take the name out of John Constantine while you're reading that book, and honestly tell me if you can tell the difference. 
like between any other like random character and John Constantine. You can't. It is clearly not Constantine. Clearly not Constantine. It's like I, mean, I the only thing I can understand, only way I would say okay, this is Constantine, is if it's because it's is him in his teen years, and you could say oh he changed after that into the Constantine that you know and love today. That is the only exception. Although we did learn about Constantine's past in the most recent volume I was reading, so contradicts a lot of stuff. And I'm not one of those people to be like, oh, this book is a, this book is an insult to his legacy. It ruins it. The continuity is screwed now. I'm not one of those people. I mean, I, I understand those people. I didn't mean to be that, like, pessimistic about it, but I understand those people, but I'm not one of those people. I like, I can read a book that, you know, is, that screws with the continuity so badly, and I'll still be like, okay, let's judge this book by itself. And judging the book by itself, it's not too great. It was okay. I don't remember a whole lot from it. I was glad that I was finished with it, but... And honestly, it's forgettable. I don't, I don't remember a whole lot from it. Other than the brief plot synopsis, synopsis honestly. But I was going over there. I'm talking about the books I already read. That are gone. Alright, so then we got Trans Metropolitan. I really liked it. It's a lot better than... than uh, so let's get back to what I remember really liking about Trans Metropolitan. The last few volumes have been kind of slowish, but this one picked up. A lot more. Too good. Alright, so now it's DC Looney Tunes. So I'm going to do a little bit... I'm going to do it to be a longer one for this and for Civil War, which I'll just do back-to-back. So Bugs Bunny Legion one, um... It was funny, and it was... It was... But the bonus story... So had, they have bonus stories in this book. And the bonus story in this one was just like retelling the exact same story you just read. It made no sense. So they explained in the later one that this is supposed to be just, it was a kind of teen rated one and then bonus stories for kids. With the bo- why would that- that doesn't make any sense. Because the bonus story- oh, you were saying say, oh, well, okay, um, I'm- uh. Alright, so we're done with this one. So, uh, see, uh, Joshua, you can read this now. This is the kitty version. You can't read this before because it's not the kitty version. It makes no sense. You're gonna want to read the whole entire issue itself. So I don't know why they did that. That's what, they, that's what they explained about in the Lobo one, which that, that bonus story was, was a fourth wall breaking one. I'll get to the one after, but that was when they explained what it was all about when they had bonus stories. But this one was completely useless. Take it out, it would be a lot better. But other than that, it was very, it used the characters to, it used the characters to their fullest potential, and honestly wanted me to read, it honestly got me to wanting to read more Legion of Superheroes. It got me to appreciate Looney Tunes as a comic book series. And on, like, both of them I'm more interested in now reading because of that first, and that was the first book. It was a very interesting, that was the one that Sam, Sam Humphreys, it was very good. Very, actually really funny. I mean, again, like a lot of comedy books, I don't remember a lot of the jokes, but they were pretty funny. It was kind of, a lot of it was Loon Tunes humor, so it was like a lot of slapstick, but they made it work. Like, I'm not, I'm not one to laugh at slapstick, and I was pretty, was laughing very hard. Not like, not like, like, like heaving, like belly laughs, but it was, you know, very, it was more than a chuckle. Then we had the Martian Manhunter one, which was better than the, better than the Bugs one, as, you know, it's less goofy, and the bonus story is not a retelling, which is nice. Um, and it was like, and the bonus story is more like a, like, this is actually how it happened, or this is a different telling of the story. It wasn't just a retelling of the same exact story. Well, to be fair, the bonus story was a t- technically, retell- a t- technically a retelling that was different, like, like events, but the Martian Manhunter one was more different than the Bugs Bunny one. It had, had a reason for existing. Um, it was a lot less goofy. The Bu- Bugs Bunny one was super goofy. I mean, it had to been, because it was Le- Legion of Superheroes. This one was more serious, but not too serious. Then we had the Wonder Woman one. Uh, this was written by Tony Bedard. He cannot write a too long of a book. Like, I feel like, because each issue was 44 pages long, about, let's say 44. 44 pages. It was longer than your average book, which is like 22 pages. So it's like almost double the size. Let's say, let's say double the size. And Tony Bedard, like, I think he just kind of lost the plot. It was very all over the place. It was still good. No, I, st- I, I Tony Bedard to me is kind of an underrated writer. Everything I've read by him, I've liked. And that's the only one I can say I don't like. I liked his Rebel series. I liked his Green Lantern, the volume one I was able to read. Yeah, it was Tony Bedard. I, I thought it was Justin Jordan, but he came out. He came, he came out after when that changed. When it changed, it changed that creative team. Uh, Lobo, Lobo, Roadrunner, boring. 
Bone Storm was pretty good. The Bone Storm was the aforementioned um, fourth wall breaking one. It was pre again, pretty funny, but it was a pretty boring story. I, I forget who wrote it, but it was. Oh, it was that. Uh, I think it was like it was Bill Morrison, right? Yeah, yes, Bill Morrison. I, I, I kept making connections to Grant Morrison, and then Bill Watterson, who was Dave Calvin and Hobbes. But I can't make I can't make too many connections to a series I have not read. I've got to get that box set of Calvin and Hobbes. They have a complete box set. I'll probably just chip in get the hardcovers. It used to be pretty affordable. I don't know if I was looking at those hardcovers or what. But I was like, oh, I can get that. For, my sister can get that for me. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, I'll see. I'll see how much it is now. Uh, you have Sam and Sam, Jonah Hex, the best one. Hands down, best one. It was a Western. I really like Westerns. Um, when it, when it told right, especially in comic form. And this reminded me of what I liked about East of West, the you know, Western Taken, and the Preacher one that I will talk about after. But, um, it was so good. It was the best one. And it utilized all the characters. It wasn't, like... Some of them, like, you could... T it was, like, kind of, like, a different version of these characters. Like, it wasn't, like, especially in the last one they were talking about. Um, it wasn't, um... Like, it wasn't, like, their actual drawings. Like, it was, it was a real person. Um, but it was really interesting. And it was the mo fastest paced one. It felt like a, it felt like it was 22 pages, and it was 42 pages. That's how good it was. It was that fast paced, that interesting, that investing... It was written by... It makes sense. It was written by Pal Palmiotti, who I really like as an author. Again, as an author. Then the Tom ba uh, Sad Boy King writes the Bugs Bunny uh, Elmer Fudd one. The one I was most excited for. And I wasn't let down, but my God, Tom King, get a therapist. My Jesus. Like, I, I understand, you know, life is tough for people. Especially you getting paid scrimping to make to write for DC Comics. They don't, they, don't pay, they don't pay their creators too much, but... Jeez, go, go to therapy if you can afford it. I'll, I'll pay for it. You just, it just easily, he writes these. I mean, it was one that wasn't too depressing. It kind of like made sense. That's why it was more depressing. But this is with Batman too. And it kind of had like a funny ending. But again, Tom Sad Boy King. I, I'm on. I'm kind of in the middle of Tom King. I like his writing, but I also don't like his writing. You know, I'm kind of kind of like thinking critical of it. Uh, now, now on to the Civil War one. She-Hulk 8 was amazing. I, I, I want the Dan Slot omnibus now. Uh, choosing Sides issue was almost perfect, but the How to Duck one was absolutely boring. Held it, held it down completely. But still an outstanding anthology issue. Uh, the Return sucked. Boring. And so did the What If one. It was way too long, too, with the What If. And then let's go back into here. Because, yeah, I, I'd written them down in my notes. I wanted to talk about each issue in, itself, because saying, like, oh, uh, I remember, I remember, from what I remember, this one was good, because it's an anthology series, so each issue was different. Preacher, the like I said before, the Western one was outstanding. Um, and, uh, of course, uh, other ones were, too. Um, the Cassidy one was, that was I wanted out of the Cassidy one shot. The last one was a war story, and I, I, like, I like war stories, and I don't like war stories. And that Cassidy one before was I didn't like, but this one was more the character of Cassidy himself. First one was telling you about his backstory, this one was telling about a friend he had once, and it was a really touching story, honestly, and kind of sad at the end. Um, without, without, without revealing too much. It does not end the way you would think it would. Batgirl Volume 1. Really good. Gail Simone used to be an amazing writer. I, I say used to be. Actually, I read her Domino. It wasn't too bad. But that was the follow-up series, I believe. It wasn't the one your boy Zach read. That one was absolutely awful when I, when, I, when I saw in the review. But the one I read was different. But yeah, her Batgirl one was amazing. I, I, will fight, I will fight someone. Not, like, fight physically, but fight, like, you know, talking, like, debate someone to the death about that Batgirl series. Because some people don't like it. Like, some people really don't like it. And it's not just because they messed with the, um... the lineage of Batgirl, her, her legacy. Uh, it... They also kind of like Gail Simone. But I, I will fight them to, to the death on it. Because I like it. I kind of want to do that. Because they're ones that they're... Because I can take an opinion... Um, I would, there are people that I like to talk, there are people that I like to watch their videos, that like they're very good, like, reviewers. Um, sorry. Alright, um, 
no, no texting to someone, so it's, uh, I'm not, I'm not doing a second cut, this is already going, this is already going way too good, but anyways, um, yeah, it's because there are people that I like to talk about, like to talk to talk about. There are people that like to talk to, you know, they're really good reviewers, but they'd say, there's that one thing that I disagree with them on, and like to, I like to debate them on it. They actually said the same thing. They actually were also very um, critical of the Ms. Marvel series, too. So, it's another one I want to be like, hey, let's talk about that one. Alright, so then we got... I keep doing that thing where I'm like, oh, let's go down. Why the Last Man Volume 5? The ending did not suck as much as I remember it sucking. And actually, because I've read a, because I, I read more about it after I read it the first time, and I kind of changed my mind about it as I went along, and I had to, and I reread it now, I'm fully for the ending they went for. But also, I'm a bit like, it's a bit of a cheese, but it, it makes sense. I would say if you really hated the Why the Last Man ending, reread the book, and you'll be surprised to see how much it holds up, you know, how much, how much it holds up, well, the series itself, but how much the ending kind of doesn't suck, and makes a lot of sense when you really think about it. I'm not going to not gonna give out too much, too many details, even I didn't know about it, I thought I would, because it's kind of a well-known, crappy ending, but I liked it. It makes sense when you reread it. Uh, Solo, the DC Solo, so this is an anthology series, some of them were terrible, it's, it's everything you like about an anthology, and everything you hate about anthology books because some of them were standouts they're so damn good like just entire issues were amazing and you had entire issues which were terrible and which were stupid and which were weird and which were like want to be grant morrison like the last issue was want to be grant morrison like, oh it's it's insane we're doing a lot of different art styles a lot of different things here and you're like yeah it's cool and all it was a batman the batman i liked though he was talking about like his Hey, a friend of his that he wanted to, not a friend of his, but he had a dream about, he had a dream of a Batman story and he got the person to draw it, the person ends up dying and he shows what, what was, what he, um, salvaged from the fire that killed his friend, to, to say it's a friend, that killed his friend, um, he got the, like, few issues, few pages that were salvageable and it was a pretty interesting story and it was, honestly, that came out back, I think it was gonna come out back, back in the 60s, I believe. No, it was, no, it was modern day. Um, I, I want to read that Batman. It's a Batman book now. I wonder if you would remember a little bit more. Um, but that, that was the only one I liked. And, and it's just kind of like... Like, it, the art style only worked when it was like a little page. And it was like a lot of like different kind of things. Like it, was like, like a, it was like a comic book going to a bag. And like the bag had like a lot of stuff written on the sides and the margins. But that kind of stuff. It's, it's experimental. And it's right... It's not like I couldn't get used to it. It's more just that they relied too heavily on the dialogue. And when you just like show the picture itself, you know, it's... You know, um, I don't have, a, I don't have, a, I don't have a, an example to give you, but I would still recommend getting it, but probably try and get it at full price, you know, because it's double the price now on Amazon, because it's out of stock, out of print. If, you're li if your local library has it, definitely pick it up, because, yeah, again, my, you could probably have a different take on the uh, issues I didn't like. Take it from me, take it from this, take it from me here. Um, I liked it a lot more than I liked it the first time. My second time reading it, I liked it. I liked it a lot better than my first time reading it, which I didn't like as much. I still like the same issues, but I liked more from the other issues I didn't like. You know, but I still hated the last two issues. The Sergio one was hit or miss. Some were good, some were bad. But the ones that were bad were kind of boring. Sergio was like more of a good. I mean, he's more of a cartoonist than, than a writer, I'd say. It was when he was talking about it. And I wonder if I said the exact same thing. Cause I, it's not a sense of deja vu. When Sergio was talking about his, his personal life, that was really interesting. Two stories that were, I honestly wonder if they're actually true. Again, deja vu. Um, but other than that, they were kind of just boring. But again, I liked it a lot more than the first time. I actually do recommend you check it out if you can get it at a good price or for free. From the library. It's pretty long, though. 680 pages, 12 issues. Uh, Sonic, Volume 2, the Eggman one, was good. It was good. I, I, it's, I, I wanted it, uh, it's the Archie run that I'm thinking of. That's insane. And actually, I saw a Sal Salty DK Dan video on it, and now I want to read those issues even more. It's the Archie comics one that I was like, that, that was the whole reason I picked up the IDW comics run. Because I heard that the, you know, and it's insane. It was the one that Luke Correa did. I'm trying to find, I'll, I'll link if I can find it. But I talk about war, and they have, like, make a joke about it. Cause it's like a, a serious, serious, like, grounded, gritty comic book featuring Sonic about war. And it's just insane. 
yeah, so I, I, I'll look it up after this. Um, maybe after this, honestly, but I mean, I mean, like, after I do the Sonic one, I'm right now. Yeah, I'll probably just do it after, in general. Uh, Snot Girl. Okay, really good. It got, like, I feel like they could have cut some issues from this series. Maybe it 12 issues, not 15, because some issues, like, not that, like, not, and it wasn't like, it wasn't like an entire issue went by with nothing happening. No, it was just like, you could have cut that down. Like, they could have, like, cut some pages from that issue, put it into another issue, made that issue a little, a little bit longer, and then, you know, it was 12 issues. But uh, other than that, I love this series, and apparently it's coming back. And there was a, it was a little, some loose ends, but it's mainly, it was, you know, I would say this series ends, it ended in a pretty good note, but still some loose ends. I was like, hey, what about this? And never explained that. Oh, they, they kind of did. Without giving too much away, they kind of have an answer for you, but it's kind of like that. Kind of like an answer where it's very, it's very open-ended answer. Technically. Like, there's a way that they can do that. Now that they, that they even though they explain it, there's still a way they could, they could still explain it, you know? Uh, Wayward. It had a good ending, but... And I want to see the series go. It was so good. Probably repeat it. Probably like a month from now, I'll get back on it and really get on it. I almost, I almost want to buy, my, buy that series myself. Uh, Snapshot and in, Indie Diggle, another good Indie Diggle crime series, but a little bit, a little bit like con not convoluted, but a little bit like too much at the end. Like too much went on. And I feel like they just need to go for five issues, not four issues. I think four issues too short of a storyline to tell all in four issues. Even if issue, every issue was a bit longer, I believe. I don't know. Uh, Rat Queens. A bit confusing at the first. Like, again, it was not the follow-up to the, the series I read before. Even though it was Volume 2 the hardcover. And Volume 1 the hardcover. The first, the first 10 issues was a special. And Volume 2 was the next the issues 1 through 10 this follow-up series. Which is, you're missing 11 through 16. But it wasn't too confused. Like at first issue, it was, and they got like more into like, it, it. It didn't rely so heavily on the past. It's few here and there, like it's like, oh wait, what that happened? Oh, I wish I I read that. I knew what happened. I read it, but no. Like the first volume, all they had to do was make it the first sixteen issues plus the specials. That's all they had to do, and then nobody would be complaining because it was sixteen issues. And they came back with a new number one, new series, new ongoing. There you go. There's volumes two and three hardcovers. Just a weird, weird thing to me that they did. Um, but again, it was still good, still good series. Um, it's here and there, it kind of got kind of a bit tedious. Um, I heard that the series gets bad as it goes along. Like as as it goes along, it's kind of worse. And I can see why people are saying that. Uh, Princeless. So here's the connection between that this series and Moon Girl. This both series started out so good, and then they're like, "Hey, let's insult the reader a bit," and they did that thing where they're like, "This is the bestest ever character, and she can kick ass and kick names, and you can, if you don't like her, then you're the bad guy." And they have like a lot of like, um, like, uh, then with that kind of stuff in this, and it's more so here than in Moon Girl. But it's again, it's one of those series that I can ignore that. And for the mo kind of, sort of, ignore it, and I can still like the book itself. You know, it's a, it's one of those things that holds me. Like I would give this book two stars out of five, which I know I've been getting two stars out of five. I give I give this a six, a, f a five out of ten, but closer to six out of five. Um, out of ten, cause I, I like doing out of ten. Out of five is too 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 small, too wide of a margin between a third three star and a two star. You know, and three star and a four star. So it's still like a okay book, but I would give it like a six out of ten, um, closer to seven and instead of a six. Had they had not had that stuff in it, they had that stuff in it. It's very distracting, so it goes down a point, but not too much. It's the best way to explain it, honestly. Archie by Nick Spencer, really good. This is what Riverdale should be and was the first volume, first first volume, first uh, season. But I I wanted to see what happened next. I don't, I don't think I can. I don't, I don't know where Volume 2 is. I don't know if it's still written by Nick Spencer. So when I looked up Nick Spencer, Archie couldn't find it. Or it's written, it written by someone else. Can't imagine it is. I don't know. Ironically enough, they had a Riverdale uh, preview at the end for the comic book. It's kind of funny to say it. It was the connections I was making when I was reading the story. Because it's very Riverdale-y. If you read the first volume, it's another murder mystery. Ish. Yeah, actually, yeah, ish. No, not ish. I don't think at least. 
I do not remember how that ended. Oh, yeah, because it didn't end. <laughs> It was a Chris. It was a cross. It was a crossover. No, it ended on kind of a cliffhanger. I they wanted to get because they're going to win one, two. Uh, Layla Star, pretty good. I probably need to reread it. It was one of those books that reminded me a lot of Day Tripper, but I didn't like about Day Tripper. Like I love Day Tripper. Day Tripper is a really good book, but it has a downside to me for for me. And this was the downside I had for Layla Star. But I think I need to reread it and then really appreciate it. But it was it was good enough. It was just kind of like it made sense at the end, and it made sense during the book. I, I knew what I knew what the characters were, and I know what the her motivation were was. But it was like it was a weird way of telling the story. Honestly, honestly, um, is what I pretty much understand. Uh, but what I want to say, yeah, all right. Uh, Power Rangers Volume Two. It was pretty good, um, a lot better than the first volume. It got a lot better. It was definitely like it was what I wanted out of the first volume. It was fast paced action and also a story too to go along with it. Like an actual like, you know thematic elements. <laughs> like, oh this person's doing this and this person's doing that and you know, uh, drama. When I say thematic elements for I said drama. <laughs> uh Cable and Deadpool. A really good series, but I think like with Sandman, I always liked Volume One. So I was saying like, oh, it's a, it's a big surprise. But I'm not only saying that because of the fact that, um, of course I did, because I, I always liked Volume One. Uh, As Guardians of the Galaxy was pretty good. Um, started out really good. Towards the end, it got a little convoluted. It relied on you reading this book, and that book, and that book, and this book, and this book. Even though As Guardians of the Galaxy is Volume One, I don't know why they didn't just like. Uh, because it's, 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 it's kind of like a spin-off of a, of a bunch of books. I can't just do Thor Volume 2, you know what I mean? I mean, as Guardians of the Galaxy, would honestly... But it's still good. It's still good. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, I still like. Still a good series. Brian, I, I'm one of those people that actually likes Brian Bendis' Guardians run. Because it reminds me a lot of the movies. But it's, it's different. I would say it's different enough from the movies to justify its, its existence. And not just to be a, a rip-off of the movies, you know what I mean? Uh, Secret Avengers was all right. Um, I'm just gonna choke down the la next two volumes and I'll be done with it forever. Um, instead of the comedy, really bogged it down sometimes. And just like the weird things to do with the characters, the weird stuff to do with the characters. Uh, Civil War I talked about. Uh, Mansion was really good. Joshua Williamson can do no wrong for me. And X Men the oh my God. X Men and it was the Steve Rogers one, James Asmus. It reminded me a lot of why uh, that would be in the. It reminded me a lot of that book that was in the bargain bin. You know why it's in the bargain bin, but you you know you got it for a discount and discount. Is and in this case I got it for free. So I'm like I'm like I can't complain. And that's exactly what I said about this book. If I had to pay for it. I would have been angry, but it was, it was good enough. It was a good, and honestly, like, James Asmus is now a writer I'll be looking for now. Because it was, it's still good, but, like, not great. And that's about it. 41 minutes. But less, l l uh, shorter than the last one. I sped around, kind of, for some of them. Because some of them I don't have a lot to talk about, and some of them I do. Hence why I wrote down some notes for one or two of them. That's it.